Time now for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning, seeing a mostly sunny sky through the day today. Even with a little bit of high cloud cover moving over the northern mountains, we won't see anything major except for some record breaking heat this afternoon. We continue with the hot temps and the sunshine through Thursday. Crystal? On to breaking overnight news for you. We're learning more about a fatal motorcycle crash on tramway in San Rafael. Police said the motorcyclist lost control on a curve, hitting a guardrail just after 1030 last night. They say the impact caused him to be catapulted off of that motorcycle. Police say he died on scene. They're not releasing his identity just yet until a family can be notified. Developing now, we are waiting to hear from police about a deadly shooting in southeast Albuquerque. APD is investigating the shooting, which happened just last, last night, just before 9 at an apartment complex on Madeira near San Mateo. Police say a man was found on the sidewalk. He was taken to the hospital where officers say he died. And we expect to learn more today from APD. When we do, we will pass it on to you. On to news happening right now. Family plans to replace a memorial after a woman is seen literally prying pieces off of it. They now ask if you know anything about this to call Crime Stoppers. The family of Daniel Saavedra Ariola set up the Rose Line Descanso near Central and Wyoming to honor him. The 24-year-old died when APD responded to a burglary call. They say he got inside the apartment and Ariola charged at officers with a knife and metal pipe in hand. They shot and killed him. An uproar still happening right now in Iran after the president pulled the U.S. out of the Iran nuclear deal and reimposed crippling sanctions against the country. Iranian politicians could be seen burning an American flag overnight. And now, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani says Tehran may restart its nuclear program. Former President Obama, whose administration helped broker the 2015 agreement, called the withdrawal a serious mistake. On to news happening today, Senator Martin Heinrich is preparing to question CIA Director nominee Gina Haspel. Heinrich is among the Democratic senators on the Senate Intel Committee, asking the CIA to declassify records about Haspel's role in its enhanced interrogation program. She's been connected to waterboarding. Her confirmation hearing begins at 7.30 this morning. We'll let you know what happens later on today. New at 6, a controversial truck stop in Santa Fe is not getting the green light from county commissioners. Developers hoped to had hoped rather to build a flying J at I-25 in Cerrillos, and they can still appeal the decision. According to the Santa Fe New Mexican, county commissioners approved some development, including hotels and restaurants, but rejected the truck stop. Locals were concerned about its impact on traffic, safety, and the environment. On to news, new at 6, La Plata County Commissioners hope a change in who can hand out tickets for bear-strewn trash will help stop the problem. According to the Durango Herald, County Commissioners voted yesterday to let Animal Protection enforce the ordinance. The report since the ordinance was put in place 10 years ago, not a single ticket has been written by the Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office says they'd like to educate rather than fine residents. County officials uh, say that human and bear conflicts have increased just recently. Metro Threat Index added two for today because they heat. Be sure if you're going to be outdoors, take plenty of breaks in the shade. Lots of water and lots of sunscreen for you and water for your pets. Turn on to some breaking news for you. We now know three American detainees have been freed from North Korea this morning. This news comes just moments after the president tweeted out about it earlier this morning. The conditions of those detainees have not been released just yet. We have been told they're being moved to a hotel since their release. They will arrive in the U.S. tomorrow morning. This all comes as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was accompanying them back to the U.S. after visiting Pyongyang. He was there to finalize plans for the historic summit between President Trump and the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He was also there, as we've been told by South Korean officials, to discuss the release of those detainees. Of course, we'll be following the very latest on this throughout the day right here on KRQE News 13. Starting today, the local woman behind a popular cosmetics company will be handing out her products to a dozen of movie stars and celebrities once again. Blush and Whimsy was invited to be a part of the gifting suite at the 71st Annual Cannes Film Festival. She's one of only 15 other companies inside of the gifting suite. During the festival, Michaela Brown says she'll demonstrate the science behind her products and talk about her company's unique story of employing differently abled people. She's also going to be launching two new products. Crystal? New this morning, a new study finds there are ways to help people with dementia live a happier life. Research in the journal Psychological Medicine studied more than 37,000 people. It said good relationships with family and friends are linked to a better quality of life. Other factors are social interaction and religious beliefs, and they are being able to be, manage everyday activities.
Kristen. Time now for a check on the morning commute. No major crashes out there. No major slowdowns looking pretty good on both interstates. All right, take a look at this video proving robots are literally everywhere. Time lapse video shows a robot painting a two story tall mural on the side of a building in California. The robot shoots paint from a computer controlled rig, kind of like a giant printer. Inventors envisioned murals this big being painted in about two and a half days instead of the weeks it would take to do by hand. They say it's about half the cost of what a human artist would charge. Woof. Hmm. Pretty impressive. Kind of interesting. All right, time now for the five facts. Start with number five here. As school comes to an end this month, one senior class is leaving their mark. The harmless prank started at Los Lunas High School earlier this week when the cafeteria was filled with streamers and balloons. Right here, a picnic table is also placed on top of pergola. Then yesterday, two bounce houses were set up inside the halls there. Seniors showed up to school driving anything but cars. School officials say as long as their pranks are all in good fun, non-destructive, and are cleaned up, they're okay with it. At number four, this August, Meow Wolf will be hosting a music festival right here in New Mexico. Taos Vortex is set for August 3rd and 4th at Kit Carson Park in Taos. The festival will feature nine bands and, and performance art and adventure opportunities, including hot air balloon tours and horseback riding. Attendees can camp out or take advantage of glamping sites at the park. We posted a link to ticket sales at alwaysonkrqb.com. At number three, very warm temperatures today. Albuquerque climbing back to the 90s. Triple digit heat out in the southeast. As far as the sky conditions go, we've got plenty of sun today and tomorrow, but increasing winds raising fire concerns to finish the week. Number two now, some say a recruiting billboard for the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office looks like an ad for the sheriff's re-election campaign. One side of the billboard along southbound I-25 says the department needs deputies. The other side has a large image of Sheriff Manny Gonzalez. His two opponents in the upcoming Democratic primary, Sylvester Stanley and Joe Williams, say the timing is questionable. The Secretary of State's office says this is legal as long as the sheriff is not using the billboard to solicit donations or votes. At number one, there's a new push to use the old jail to bring in some money instead of collecting dust and costing taxpayers. The building downtown has sat empty for the last seven years. This was after the county's contract ended with a corrections company housing uh, federal inmates there prior to that. Since then, the county says it's been paying at least $84,000 a year to keep the lights on and keep the insurance going. The county invited film companies to consider using it in films. Productions could bring in anywhere from $500 to $5,000 a day.